Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a EJB project and how uh, that can be deployed on the Oracle WebLogic server from Eclipse. So here I have configured Oracle WebLogic uh, server in Eclipse. If you don't know how to install and configure Oracle WebLogic server with Eclipse, then please watch my previous video tutorial. Now here, uh, uh, intention of this video is to show you how to deploy uh, EJB project on the WebLogic server, right? Uh, I'm not going to cover uh, EJB stuff in in depth. So if you want to learn EJB in uh, in depth, then you can refer my another video tutorial there. I'm going to cover uh, EJB in uh, in depth. So let's go ahead and create a right click over here and here you can see uh, you have an option is called uh, enterprise application project if you don't need if you don't get this option then go to the others and here you type enterprise so here you got the this option enterprise application project and let's click on the next and here i'm going to specify the project name uh, my ejb project right and uh, make sure that in uh, runtime environment you have selected oracle weblogic 12c that is the latest version of oracle so that up to you whatever oracle version you are uh, i mean working on so the process of creating this project would be similar in all the oracle weblogic server now let's click on the next and finish so we have created this project with name my EJB project and right click over here and uh, uh, go to the new and here you can see EJB project. So let's create EJB project. So basically I'm going to wrap everything inside this project, my EJB project. So I will say EJB project right so and uh, you will have to select this option here select this option and let's click on the next next and uh, I want to create the client program within this project itself so let's uh, this is by default selected selected so let's keep as it is and click on the finish so client program also will be created within this project so you can see so we had selected uh, to create a EJV client program. So also EJV client program has been created. Now uh, we have an EJV project and inside this EJV project what I am going to do. Uh, we have an EJV project inside this. I am going to create a interface first of all. Uh, uh, let's create a session bin and this session bin I'm going to create in the package is called com dot info tip dot bin and uh, bin name I'm going to specify my bin and let's and uh, here I'm going to select here you have two options either you can select remote or local so that depends on you whether you want to invoke your EJB like uh, uh, EJB component like session bin, entity bin or message driven bin right these are the component of EJB you want to invoke remotely or locally that depends up to you right so here I'm going to select remotely so that I can uh, invoke my EJB component from the remotely remote machine as well right so let's click on the next and finish so here my EJB uh, has been created right he's uh, been state stateless bin has been created so there are two types of ejb uh, bin like basically stateless and a stateful right so i'm not going to dig what the what is the stateless and stateful and there is a remote interface has been added so in this remote interface that is added in the uh, basically client program right you can see that remote is so remote inter, uh, client basically holds the uh, basically 
remote interface and implementation of this interface is given by the EJ project. So here I'm going to add a very simple method like a string uh, welcome. I'll take the uh, client name colon right. So whoever will call that will pass this name and just I want to greet them with his name. Now here you can see error is coming because this in this interface I we have added one business logic method. Now add unimplemented method and here just I'm gonna return a string like uh, hello and just concat with his name. So it's a very simple method. In real scenario you may have a complex business logic method, but here I have took a very simple example, right? So that's all. And go to the client program. Here we have a client program. In client program, uh, I'm going to create a client program which holds the main method. And from there, I will call this EJV component. EJV session. So here I will get the test which will contains the main method. Let's clear it over. Here. So main method is here, right? And what I'll do. Uh, now this EJV project I'm going to deploy on the Oracle server so uh, right click on the project and go to the run as and run on the EJV and run on the server and select this Oracle uh, web logic server click on the next 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 and finally click on the finish now this is this EJV project is going to deploy on my web logic server so this will take a couple of minutes So now EJB is deployed or deployed on the WebLogic server and now server is in a starting a started mode. Now we have to write the client client program to invoke that session wing, right? Which is deployed remotely. So here is the client program. If you right click on the client program and uh, go to the build path and uh, here in build path. Uh, you need to remove this one. This is web logic system library. This is not needed in the client program basically. So let's remove it. Okay. And here I'm going to write this code. This code I have already written. So just, uh, just I have pasted over here. This is pretty straightforward code. So I'm going to explain what is this code basically. So, okay. Sorry. So there would be only one main method. So let's test like this control shift f for formatting and let's import this classes context import will have to happen from the javax.naming and uh, this is also javax.naming right and javax. right so this program we have written so here we have created our properties classes here you can take a hash table as well so pro uh, property basically takes key value pairs as a stream so here initial context factory i have given basically web logic gndi factory name uh, after that i have included i mean provider url so this is the url of web logic right t3 is the protocol localhost where my server is running oracle server is running and this is the port number of the server now security principle is nothing but the, the username of the WebLogic server and finally uh, security principles is nothing but the password of my WebLogic server that's it right uh, here we got the uh, here we got the context object but one thing I forgot to include so here what is coming over here in client program right so here in my EJV project there I have created my remote interface so here says here we'll have to specify your one attribute is called mapped name that is nothing but JNDI name so JNDI name you can specify anything I'm going to specify EJB slash my something like this right now we will have to redeploy it because we made some modification over here now this client program is throwing some error so go to the fix project setup and here what you will have to do basically you need to add a jar in your class path so go to the build path and select libraries add external jars so basically when we want to connect to the uh, to make a 
call from client you require this chart to be added in your class part wl thin three client so that depends on the web logic server so i am using 12c so this is the jar to connect with the remote server so i am going to click on ok and uh, this error has gone right now what i will do i will redeploy this cjb project on the uh, web logic server because uh, later point of time i added uh, this jndi name over here right now test program here so here in test program uh, con you will have to write context dot we have a lookup method and here you're gonna specify a uh, jndi name whatever jndi name you specify over here that you will have to specify and after that you need to write hash and after hash you need to basically specify your uh, remote interface name with qualified package so let's copy the qualified package of this remote interface name and paste it over here that's it and this is basically going to return you an object and this object we have to typecast into my remote interface right so this is this works like a stop basically now and you just typecast into this interface right so let's see you can import and once you get the reference of this interface then you can make call to this method right so we have a welcome method and you can pass you can hard code any name over here like i'm going to hard code martin okay and this will return some response as a string right let's say this is result and this result i'm gonna print it over here on console so if you do system dot out dot print and this will print on the console and let's see whether we are able to invoke the our ejb component component remotely or not so if i run it run as a simple java application you will have to run sorry so my ejb server is up and running and ejb component we have deployed so from main method just we are trying to invoke our remote interface method right so let's see what output we are getting so we get the hello martin right so that means we are able to successfully invo invoke this remote interface method right so that's all i have in this video tutorial in next video tutorial i am going to show you we'll create a separate web based application and from uh, uh, there i will try to invoke my uh, ejb component right so so that's all i have in this video tutorial thanks for watching this video tutorial and don't forget to watch second part of this video there i am going to elaborate some more things thanks